So, hey, welcome back. Um, so I'm going to try and do this probably over the week after work here. Uh, it's supposed to only take two hours to put this uh, wood splitter together. Um, picked it up yesterday from uh, Canadian Tire. And we paid about $1660 for it. $1660. Not to be confused with $16. Um, so we uncreated it yesterday so we would get it off. It comes in a, it's about 400 pounds. So it comes in a crate like that. It's really big, about 400 pounds. Um, so right now I have it all kind of spread out along here. Um, yeah, so it's the 224cc, 20 ton champion. Uh, a lot of people don't seem to like the engine. I think they said it was made by Honda, but we'll find out, I guess. Uh, here's all the specs there. The 20 ton I thought would be good enough for what we need it for. Um, it does have the horizontal and vertical uh, splitting mode, which is quite handy if you've got bigger blocks. You can just stand them on the ends and have to lift them up on the on the horizontal. I'm going to see if I can get at least the, uh, the chassis together today and then uh, see where we're at then. Probably just today or tomorrow we can put it together. Um, I do need to, you do need to pick up the hydraulic fluid. They don't supply that um, unfortunately so I've got to pick that up. So see how much that is and we'll pick that up today or tomorrow and then yeah see how we go see if we can get this together over two two evenings after work okay so we've got things laid out so just show you that how they actually lay out all the nuts and bolts well yes they actually pretty good they actually make it pretty easy to label out everything so we are going with the instructions the thing i always seem to muck up and not do uh so we laid out the this is what the uh your wheels will attach to and your hitch Hitch bar. Um, so we got the little uh, fenders here. So we're going to attach those, and then the wheels, and then the hitch, and that gets the main main chassis together. And then we'll look where we are after that. Okay, yeah. going to put the wheels on next. So these come with the caps on. So you just take these off. Uh, to take them off carefully on the valve stem side, they have a bearing, tapered bearing in there that's sitting there loose. But what you want to make sure is that the valve there is uh, facing out so obviously you can get to it later and pull it up. Um, so yeah, when you slide them on the axles, you just got to take out the cotter pin uh, and the nut off the end here. And then slide it on making sure that, just make sure these don't pop out, the little uh, tape buried in here. And then once that's on, put the uh, nut back on and the uh, cotter pin. Okay, so the wheels are on, um, fenders are on. Uh, I was missing one cotter pin for this side, but I'll just go head up to Canadian Tire and, and get another one. It's not a huge issue. Um, but I got the cotter pin on this one, I guess it would have fallen out. They just uh, put in with the axle there, it's just tucked in with that. Um, so either didn't get put in or it just fell out. So no biggie. Okay, so next we'll uh, jump on the hitch. Okay, this one's pretty simple. Um, the instructions show up pretty easy too, but uh, yeah, this is just gonna slide into this piece, bolt it together. All the bolts are already set in place, so you just gotta take them apart and put them in. And same with the rear. So put it together and move on. Okay. Any chassis done? Um, I guess we start looking at putting on the uh, the ram and the motor and stuff like that. Hydraulic ram and so on. So yeah, go ahead. So far, been easy. Okay, so next we're actually installing the beam, big guy. Uh, it's really easy. So it's just a uh, cotter pin. Just undo this, 
pull it out that's got to go in here and then that's pretty much it it just tilts on that and these pull levers just lock it down to where it needs to go so that's a fairly simple one so we it is pretty heavy though so we'll just see how i can line this up and get it in. okay that was really easy um okay on to the next Okay, next we'll put in the uh, wedge and the actual hydraulic ram in. Um, a little too hard. It's got a little uh, kind of round end here which stuck into this part. Nuts again already in place. He's got to undo them. We're going to slot it in. Bolt the ram one end to that. I mean, it's pretty simple. You can see. Uh, and then yeah, bolt this part in. I think we get this part in. Just get it uh, mocked in here a little bit. Okay, so that's the uh, ram in. As I say, it's actually a pretty easy uh, build. Uh, almost considered about uh, about getting them to pay them to actually do it, which they do. But so far, so easy. Too easy. Okay, next is the motor, which uh, it's like a uh, bolts underneath with four bolts, um, straight into the actual motor. So no nuts with that. So that's a fairly easy one, and that's all the major parts, uh, except for the guards to hold the wood there. Um, I'm sure that'll almost be next. But yeah, we'll bolt this on, and then uh, see what's after that. Okay, with these nuts for the engine, they tell you to stick them up from the bottom, which kind of makes it hard if you're trying to use a ratchet to tighten them up. So I've gone to actually put them down. Um, that way, even if the nut fails anyway, the uh, bolt will stay in there and stop it kind of totally falling off altogether. Hopefully you've tightened enough, but things always fail sometimes. So yeah, I'm just going to drop them in from the top, slide them in, and that way I can just use this ring, ring wrench on the top and ratchet from the bottom, make it easier. Okay, next is hydraulic hoses. Um, this one goes down from the actual pump to the reservoir which is like where the axle or what looks like the axle goes um, you just got to remember to remove the show you here, these red plugs and um, they said there may be residue of oil in there so they test it but this is where we're putting that hose from here to there Just to show you Yeah, just want to go from here to there. Let's get that on. It's pretty much just hooking up all these hydraulic uh, hoses now, and then yeah, the guards go on last. So we'll get these on, and we'll show you that what that okay. looks like. That's that one all hooked up. Again, fairly simple. It hasn't been anything too challenging on this actually. It's been a fairly easy uh, build. So. Uh, so I'll just see where these other ones go up top here. Okay, just with this one, um, this you have to install yourself, but just remember to put the thread uh, tape. This comes with everything, so remember to put that on before we put it in, otherwise you're going to get leaks. I believe you have to do it for this both connections again. Just have to, I'll just double check, but these hoses. So this hose goes down to here, and the one on the far side goes down to here just pull off the cap put it on so okay so that's how the hoses look uh they say they bring that bring them over top so just remember that so yeah r1 comes under 
goes down to the actual pump and then the one on this side goes down to the reservoir so okay I think it's putting these uh, guards on next and we're almost there okay so the guards are on okay now pretty easy just four bolts on the side of that one two at the top so now it's just they actually give you this is actually a canister for the instruction manual and so on so it screws to the side so we'll put that on and it's just made of putting oil and stuff so probably wait till tomorrow i'll pick some up tomorrow and we'll top up the oil do the oil let's go check if the engine has any uh, hopefully it does um, and it's just a hydraulic we have to get uh, we'll have a look at that after we put this on okay one thing i did forget was the o-ring and that one this o-ring goes down on this hose here so i'm just gonna whip this off put this o-ring on and we're done okay so i've just been reading up so the engine is dry so don't start it, it needs the oil needs uh 16.9 filtered ounces or 500 mils depending on your uh, unit of measure in your country um takes 10w-30 oil that is for the engine and uh and just take straight gas, uh, 87 octane minimum there. And then the hydraulic takes a huge four gallons or 15.1 liters. That's a lot, so. Okay, right. next day. Uh, so I went down, grabbed us the oil last night. $124 later. So it was cheaper to get I need 15 litres basically to put into the splitter uh, for hydraulic uh, oil so it's cheaper to buy the 18.9 the bucket rather than singular otherwise it would have been 124 bucks just in hydro hydraulic oil so this was a cheaper way to go I kind of went middle of the range to it and go the cheaper stuff or the most expensive this kind of middle there um, they have a few different um, ISOs and so on to choose from in the manual there with ISO 32 and and we got the uh, engine oil itself okay so we topped it up I'm gonna I'll check the fluids after we run it start it up here um, with the hydraulic uh, it's actually got a uh, eyeglass on the other side there nibble glass there you go so right now it's kind of just a little over full but that is supposed to be dead middle, the dot, the red dot's uh, meant to be dead center of the, uh, or the level is dead center of it. So I think once the hoses fill up, I'll probably just have to top it up again. So that was the easiest way, of course, you didn't have to take out any of the other container. So yeah, just dump it in, fill it up to the level. So yeah, we'll start it up and uh, yeah, because down here you can see the, the hose isn't quite full either. So by the time it rattles around in there, I'll probably have to top it up again. So that'll be the idea. Cool. started off really easy um, the levels did go down you can see it's actually dropped below it's kind of just at the bottom of the eyeglass so I'll fill it up to the middle again top it up and same with the engine we'll check that okay here we are from the Aguirre this morning gonna try it out we've got some season wood from last year uh, so it is already dry uh, spruce and aspen bigger diameter here around about 30 30 and about 25 centimeter diameter um, show you how easy it is to use 
We've got our daughter here today, Jean, she's going to try it out, so start up. So that's it, that's how easy it is to use. Um, I do notice these kind of bend a little bit, like uh, just with the knots on the wood, so, but they seem to hold up still and flex back. But, no, I'm going to carry on my day. I've got a huge pile to cut up. Um, so yeah, hopefully that makes you help make a decision on either to get one or not. Um, like if you like it, subscribe, I want to see more, and we'll catch you later. Okay, let's start splitting wood. Thank you.